Now, if you look at your daily life, you really immediately see the dependence of many things you do with biodiversity. If you take the clothes we are wearing, this cotton. My trousers are wool. Cotton is a plant species. Wool is an animal uh, species. The food we eat, many different species of plant. Now, if you only get carrot every day, you will be bored. That's why you have potatoes, carrots, different type of uh, vegetable, sometimes a small piece of meat, etc. The breads we have, the cheeses we have, it's all made by other species, bacteria, uh, fungi, plant species, etc. So there is a, an atlas of all the species we use, and there are already about 8,000 species documented which we use one way or the other for our food. Now, then we have the wood, all the different kinds of wood for building furniture, for building houses, for building shelters. Um, when you walk in nature, in, in the weekend you go cycling, you don't want to cycle in the city, maybe the first part, but then you want to go out in the hills, in the woods, etc. That's another uh, service that actually species provide us. Uh, the beauty of, of, of the, the landscape. So, in principle, a lot of people think that all our daily needs come from the supermarkets, but they actually come from biodiversity. And it's that dependence which is actually very important and should be stressed by these assessments. Now, over the last 20 years, I've been involved in many assessments. One was the IPCC, the climate uh, change assessment, and especially how do ecosystems respond to, uh, to climate. And you see that these assessments are extremely important in actually informing policymakers about the problem and really building trust in that they can actually understand the problem and then take the, uh, respon or the adequate uh, responses. The same we did with the Millennium Ecosystem Assessment, which was very much looking at how important are ecosystems, nature, life on Earth, biodiversity for human well-being. And within that assessment, one of the concepts which was used was ecosystem services. Food, fiber, all comes from different uh, species. And we really were able to, to show that over the last 50 years, people are actually better off but that has come at an expense of uh, degradation of ecosystems worldwide. And the Millennium Ecosystem Assessment, in contrary to the IPCC, the climate uh, assessment, was only a one-time assessment. But it had quite, quite a lot of influence. And the IPBES assessment the, is very much focusing again as a su successor of the Millennium Ecosystem Assessment on biodiversity. What are the threats to biodiversity? How is it changing? What can we do about it? So it again takes the, uh, the data side, but also the understanding. How does it change? Why does it change? But also again, a policy side from how can we respond to it? What are successful uh, responses? And for biodiversity, you can think of nature reserves, but you can also think of good management of, of forest, of, of coasts, of agricultural lands to really keep the biodiversity lively and sufficient. Now in principle, it's a very similar uh, process as the IPC, but the IPC looks very much at climate. What are the drivers of climate change and how can we respond through mitigation of the emissions, through adaptations to the impacts. And IPBES does the same, but then for biodiversity. And it's again looking at the, the different users for IPC on climate change, while uh, IPBES is very much the Convention on Biological Diversity. And some other conventions, like the Wetlands Convention, the Ramsar Convention, the Convention to Combat Desertification, the Convention of Mi Migratory Species. So all those conventions which deal with natural resources one way or the other, IPBES will provide the scientific understanding. The IPBES initiative is very important because 
Millennium Assessment, which provided a lot of insights, was done in the early uh, 2000s. So that's already six, seven years ago. Since a lot of new understanding has actually evolved. So you want to repeat that okay. and you want to include the latest uh, insights. So it is very important because science progresses, the policy questions change, the world changes, that you actually keep track of those kind of changes. So doing such an assessment, that will take about three to four years. So even if you start with IPBES now, the results will be 2014, 2015. That's 10 years after Millennium Assessment. Now, it's a very good update, a timely update then, but it is very, very necessary because in the last 10 years, a lot of changes happened.